Hello, my name is Dr. Melanie Bourgeau. I'm currently a third year pathology resident at Emory University, and I'm excited to welcome you to my first educational video. This is my final project for the Digital Communications and Pathology Fellowship, so I want to take a moment to thank Dr. Cameron Mirza, Dr. Michael Schubert, and all the wonderful lecturers who have taken the time to teach myself and my co-fellows over the past year. I would especially like to thank Dr. Jared Gardner for being my mentor for this final project. This video will be the first in a series on indexal tumors, and each video will cover a different morphologic category. I based these categories off of a paper by Dr. Edward Fulton, which I highly recommend reading, and I'll put a link to that in the description. The topic of this video is sebaceous tumors, so let's get started with the case. Also, if you want to take a look at the slide for yourself, I've included a link to that in the description as well. This is a shave biopsy of a papule on the face of a six-year-old man. So at low power, I can see this is a very blue or basaloid lesion. It is superficially located and appears to be well circumscribed with a pushing growth pattern. If I move to higher magnification, I can see that this lesion is composed predominantly of these blue basaloid cells. However, there is also a population of larger cells with vacuolated cytoplasm. These vacuoles are well defined and appear to indent or scallop the nucleus. So this is an example of a sebaceoma, a benign sebaceous neoplasm composed of more than 50% basaloid cells. But before we get into the differential, let's go back to the basics. A normal sebaceous gland is composed of small lobules of mature sebacytes, which are these large vacuolated cells, with a thin rim of peripheral basaloid cells, the cells that give rise to the sebacytes. Sebacytes secrete sebum, an oily substance, via holocrine secretion, which essentially means the cells die to release their contents. And you can see a bit of that right here. Normal sebaceous glands are also associated with the hair follicle. Sebaceous tumors look like sebaceous lobules to varying degrees, the main distinction being the amount of basaloid cells. There's also often a gradual transition from the peripheral basaloid cells into the central mature sebacytes, the intermediate form being immature sebacytes. These cells are smaller than their mature counterpart, with a larger nucleus and amphiphilic cytoplasm with few vacuoles. When approaching a sebaceous lesion, there are a couple of pitfalls to be aware of. First, holocrine secretion can be extensive in both benign and malignant sebaceous tumors and may be misidentified as tumor necrosis, leading to a misdiagnosis of sebaceous carcinoma. I'll discuss this more later, but sebaceous carcinoma should not be diagnosed based on the presence of necrosis alone. In addition, the true necrosis seen in sebaceous carcinoma is morphologically distinct from what we see in holocrine secretion. Another possible pitfall is mitotic activity. Because the basal cells are essentially the proliferative layer, some mitotic activity in these cells is not concerning. Going back to the differential, there are three benign sebaceous lesions to consider. Sebaceous hyperplasia, sebaceous adenoma, and sebaceoma. All three often present as a solitary yellow papule on the face of an adult, and may clinically mimic basal cell carcinoma. They may also have a central depression, or DEL, which histologically corresponds to a direct connection of the tumor to the skin surface. As I mentioned earlier, the main distinction between these lesions is the amount of basaloid cells. Sebaceous hyperplasia looks like oversized sebaceous glands with a normal amount of basaloid cells. Sebaceous adenoma has a greater than normal percentage of basaloid cells, but they comprise less than 50% of the tumor. Our case, sebaceoma, is similar to sebaceous adenoma, but is composed of more than 50% basaloid cells. Most sebaceous adenomas and sebaceomas are sporadic, but a minority are associated with muratory syndrome, especially in younger patients, those with multiple extrafacial tumors, and tumors with cystic change. However, none of these features are diagnostic. For instance, the sebaceoma I just showed did have some cystic change. However, given that this was a solitary lesion in an older adult with no significant history, additional testing, 
such as immunohistochemistry for mismatch repair proteins, would not be indicated. For information on the use of MMRIHC for Muratori syndrome, I provided a link to the current guidelines in the description. In reality, these lesions exist on a spectrum, so there is some inter-observer variability. The good news is that all three are benign, and there is no difference in clinical management. However, not all sebaceous tumors are benign, and unfortunately there is significant inter-observer variability in the diagnosis of benign versus malignant, particularly in well-differentiated circumscribed lesions. If you'd like to learn more, I provided a link to a paper by Dr. Nathan Harvey in the video description. Sebaceous carcinoma usually arises on the face of older adults, with the upper eyelid being the most common sight. A well-differentiated sebaceous carcinoma may look benign at first glance. However, the presence of numerous mitoses, including atypical forms, nuclear atypia, necrosis, and infiltrative growth should raise concern for malignancy. As I alluded to earlier, necrosis in sebaceous carcinoma isn't the same as holocrine secretion. Typically, you'll see sheets of necrotic basaloid cells, like the ones right here, and the necrosis has more of a grungy appearance. For poorly differentiated sebaceous carcinomas, the dilemma is distinguishing these from other poorly differentiated carcinomas, such as squamous cell carcinoma. This is made more complicated by the fact that other carcinomas can have sebaceous differentiation and sebaceous carcinoma can have focal squamous differentiation as well. Immunohistochemistry showing vacuolated cytoplasmic staining with EMA and acetophyllin, as well as nuclear staining for factor 13A, specifically clone AC1A1, may be helpful in some cases. Correct diagnosis versus other skin cancers is clinically important because these tumors often have extensive pagetoid spread, so clinical management can be more aggressive if the diagnosis of sebaceous carcinoma is made. Some cases of sebaceous carcinoma are associated with Muratori syndrome, especially if they are poorly differentiated and located away from the head and neck in a patient under 50 years old. In contrast, well-differentiated sebaceous carcinomas are strongly associated with TP53 mutations. The last entity I want to cover is Nevis sebaceous, which is actually a hamartoma, but is often included when discussing sebaceous tumors due to the prominent sebaceous component. Clinically, it is a hairless plaque on the scalp which is present at birth. When the patient reaches puberty, the effects of sex hormones cause enlargement of the sebaceous glands, including those that are part of the lesion, which makes it appear more prominent and greasy. So this is a nice, low-power diagnosis. You can see papillomatosis, an increased number of sebaceous lobules, which secrete directly onto the skin's surface, without an associated hair follicle. In fact, hair follicles are absent, which is really quite striking in this photo. In addition, sweat glands are often apocrine instead of eccrine, and thinking back to normal skin histology, apocrine sweat glands are normally only present in the anogenital region, axillary region, and eyelids. Lastly, although this lesion is not neoplastic, it is not uncommon to see neoplasms arising within it. Benign and nexal tumors are most common, but rarely epithelial and anexal malignancies can occur. And with that, we've reached the end of my first video. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. Also, for more educational pathology content, you can check out my Twitter and Kiko accounts.